Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. The BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Council of Representatives Speaker Fawzi bin Abdullah Zainal, Defense Affairs Minister Ten General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi was also present. The Commander in Chief discussed aspects of cooperation and coordination between the BDF and the Council of Representatives. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the members and technical and administrative bodies of the national football team in the presence of the Secretary General of the SYCS. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the president of Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa, and member of the national team's committee, Mohammed bin Jalal. His Highness affirmed the importance of the efforts exerted by the Bahrain Football Association to support all team members in light of the exceptional circumstances imposed by the spread of the coronavirus. He added that a comprehensive program is being designed to continue the efforts of the entire team and prepare the members for all upcoming competitions. Meanwhile, His Highness expressed pride in the eagerness and hard work of the players who have committed to house training to ensure their readiness for future competitions. His Highness continued by saying that the upcoming phase is essential for the national team as all members have to exert double the efforts, particularly with the approach of resumption of sporting activities, including the World Cup qualifiers and Asia Cup. During the meeting, His Highness was briefed on the team's strategic and administrative plan to restart the daily training of the team, as well as the precautionary measures to be taken. He was also briefed by coach uh, Helio uh, Sousa on the upcoming plan uh, for the team as well as the coach's vision for the team in the upcoming World Cup qualifiers. For their, their part, the team members pledged to exert more efforts to continue to further raise the Bahraini flag in international championships. والله رجعتوا لنا مره ثانيه نشوه الفوز والفرحه اللي احنا فرحناها سوا. الحقيقه يعني هذا يوم تاريخي ما ننساه ابدا ولا ينساه اي بحريني ولا بحرينيه ولا اي محب لهذا البلد الكبير باسمه وكبير وافعاله. يعني الحقيقه انا اليوم سعيد اني اشوفكم وحريص اني اشوفكم ومو بس اني احفزكم ولكن أذكركم أول شيء بالإنجاز اللي إحنا أنجزناه هذه ذاكرة ما تموت ونبتدي نستذكرها على مر السنين لأن الحقيقة هذا تاريخ أنتوا دخلتوا ونحدتوا اسمكم من قائمة إنجازات مملكة البحرين وصرتوا من ضمن أبطال هذه المملكة فهذا الإنجاز الحقيقة يعني كل يوم يتجدد في في نفوسنا ولكن مثل ما قلت لكم احنا دائما نتطلع الى القادم نتطلع الى الانجازات اللي امامنا والتحديات اللي امامنا وخاصه في هذا الوقت اللي احنا نعيشه اليوم يعني هذا الوقت الحقيقه يعني غريب شوي من نوعه ولكن يتطلب الى ناس ذو عزيمه وذو اصرار يتقبلون التحديات ونواكب هذه التحديات ومهما صار أه لا بد ان احنا نواصل على نفس هذه السمعه ونفس الاداء أه الشطاره اليوم والفوز للشخص اللي هو بيتكيف اسرع وبيتاقلم اسرع مع هذا المرض الجائح فاحنا تعودنا بشيء واحد تعودنا احنا نوفي بوعودنا احنا نضع الاحلام فوق ونوفي بها نراهن أه على انفسنا 
واحنا يا المسؤولين نراهن عليكم فانتم جنودنا اللي في ساحه هالمعركه اللي احنا نستخدمها بهالعباره هذه لان حقيقه اي واحد يرفع علم مملكته او علم بلاده ويناطح فيها السحاب فهذا جدي من جنود هذا الوطن الوعد هذا اللي احنا نوعد فيه مملكه البحرين لابد ان احنا نوفي فيه وما نوقف عند حدنا هذه يعني مو بنهايه الانجاز امامنا ان شاء الله انجازات اكبر واللي راح يشوفونه ان شاء الله الناس هي ان احنا راح نواجه التحديات بنفس الروح اللي احنا واجهناها في السابق انا الحقيقه يعني ابغي احفزكم اني اشوفكم اليوم عشان اذكركم ان ترى بمباركه من سيدي جلاله الملك الله يطول عمره و بمتابعه سيدي سمو ولي العهد وايضا سيدي سمو رئيس الوزراء لكم شخصيا ومحبتهم لكم شخصيا وللاسره الرياضيه بشكل كامل عطونا الحمد لله الاوامر ان احنا نمشي في خطوات بالتنسيق مع الطواقم الطبيه ان احنا ان شاء الله نستانف الدوري والنشاطات الرياضيه باللي نقدر عليه من ضمن الشروط الطبيه فانتم ان شاء الله نتوقع منكم باذن الله يعني في هالشهر القادم ان انتم خلاص تبتدون موسمكم وتباشرون باللعب وتباشرون ان شاء الله بالمنافسات، فهلا الله في اللياقه، هلا الله في في الصحه والنوم من وقت والاكل الصحي وغيره انتم تعرفون هالاشياء ذي كلها، ولكن ابيكم تجهزون جاهزيه كامله تحطون في بالكم ان ما تجينا التزاماتنا الدوليه اللي هي في شهر 10 ان شاء الله امام المنتخبات اللي تاهلنا الى تصفيات كاس العالم الا انتم في عز طاقتكم وعز لياقتكم. فاتمنى لكم ان شاء الله التوفيق في هذا الموسم الجديد واتمنى ان شاء الله ان انتم تحافظون على هذه اللياقه وهذه الروح اللي احنا شفناها منكم. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Affairs and Youth Affairs National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has expressed delight at the success of his two-year-old Vili Rumaythan in the winning of the 1,200-meter race at the UK's Red Car Race Course. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa stated that the new achievement embodies His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's unlimited support for Bahraini sports, especially equestrian sports. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the equestrian sport has attained multiple achievements for the kingdom during His Majesty the King's prosperous era, adding that the exploit is the fruitful result of the unwavering royal support. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the victorious team has earned the kingdom innumerable successes during its external participation over the past period, noting that it will continue attaining more achievements for the kingdom. His Highness praised the efforts made by the trainer Roger Werner and the skilled rider David Eigen, congratulating them for their achievements. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee and President of the Istijaba Coordination, Execution and Follow-up Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the committee's weekly meeting remotely. With the participation of the committee's members and members of the Representatives Council, His Highness welcomed the decision of turning clubs into companies including by, or, or issued by the cabinet chaired by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that this decision is part of the developmental projects package of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who has developed this package for the Istijaba Committee. His Highness hailed the decision of the Executive Committee, presided by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, to resume sports leagues starting next mid-July. He also praised the results of the last CSCYS meeting presided by His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirming that the meeting reflects the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in developing sports in the kingdom. For their part, the representative council members hailed the cabinet's decision to turn clubs into companies affirming that this will further develop the sporting sector. The 
Bahrain has expressed its solidarity with and support for the speech made by Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi regarding the right of his country to defend its national security against the developments in Libya. The Egyptian president uh, delivered his speech during his inspection of the Western Military Zone. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed Bahrain's support for the president's affirmation of Egypt's determination to protect and secure its western borders with their strategic depth from the threats of the terrorist militia and mercenaries to restore security and stability in Libya as an integral part of Egypt's security and stability and Arab national security and to stop the bloodshed of the Libyan people. The ministry commended the speech of the Egyptian president as a clear and highly significant message to those who have the intention to compromise the national security of Egypt and Arab countries and Egypt's commitment to its values and principles in defending Arab integrity and interests. The ministry also lauded the great wisdom and genuine true intentions of the Egyptian leadership towards the conflict in Libya that were reflected in the Cairo initiative to meet the aspirations of the Libyan people for security, stability and peace that has received regional and international support. The ministry stressed Bahrain's support for Egypt and all the measures taken to preserve its security and stability. The Ministry of Health said that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,481 with 503 recoveries, 415 registered new cases and four deaths. The deceased were, was a 52-year-old male expatriate, a 55-year-old male expatriate and a 69-year-old expatriate and a 46-year-old female citizen. The Ministry of Health expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. In our international news, Saudi Arabia's foreign ministry says it supports uh, Egypt's right to protect its western borders from Libya from terrorism. The kingdom's government affirmed that the security of Egypt is an integral part of the security of Saudi Arabia and the entire Arab nation. And the kingdom stands with Egypt and its right to defend its border and people from extremist tendencies and terrorist militias and their supporters in the region. Saudi Arabia's announcement of support came one on, on the same day Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi warned that a Advances by Turkey-backed forces in Libya could prompt an Egyptian military intervention in the neighboring country. Egypt's President Adil Fattah al-Sisi said that during his visit to the Western military region that the Egyptian army is capable of defending Egypt's national security inside and outside its borders. He noted that the Egyptian army is one of the strongest armies in the region, stressing that it is a rational army that uh, protects and does not threaten and is able to defend Egypt's national security inside and outside the borders of the country. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said that Egypt is committing to using diplomacy in resolving a crisis with Ethiopia over its construction of a giant hydroelectric dam on the Blue Nile. The talks were halted once again on Wednesday, this time only about a fortnight before the expected startup of the $4 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is being built near Ethiopia's border with Sudan and is the centerpiece in its bid to become Africa's biggest power exporter. Al-Sisi said that Egypt is keen to take the diplomatic and political path until its end, stressing the importance of moving strongly towards concluding the negotiations and reaching an agreement that benefits all sides. Meanwhile, in Morocco, the uh, country's government said that it will further loosen lockdown measures for the service sector and domestic transport starting June 24th. Cafes, restaurants, sports clubs and other services and entertainment businesses will be able to resume activity at half capacity, except in the provinces where infections remain high. Domestic travel will resume, including flights and railways, while international passenger traffic remains suspended. Mosques will remain closed until July 10th, while schools will will reopen in September. Here's Bara Abdullah with the latest business news. Thank you, Sara.
Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Barah Abdullah. As starting with the local stocks as the Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,274.55 points, marking an increase of 0.25 points above the previous closing. This increase was due to the rise in the services sector results indicated that 28 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,200,912 worth 193,529 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the investment sector representing 57.91% of the total value of securities traded. Saudi Arabia has risen two places in the annual World Competitiveness Rankings compiled by the International Institute for Management Development, IMD. Ranking as the 24th most competitive economy among the 63 countries covered by the report. The IMD report released earlier in the week said Saudi Arabia moved up the ranking uh, on three out of four factors covered by the benchmark from 30th to 20th position in economic performance, from 25th to 19th in the business efficiency and from 38th to 36th in the infrastructure. Oil rebounded this week with Brent crude recovering to above 42 US dollars and WTI following the same trajectory, finishing the week at 39.75 US dollars per barrel. The recovery came on the heels of the first weekly decline in six weeks amid a huge sell off in the futures markets that coincided with the major equities retreat. The monthly reports of both the International Energy Agency, IEA, and OPEC show OECD commercial oil stocks at historical highs above the five-year average. They also indicated a sharp downward movement in petroleum refined products prices. Spain's national state of emergency has ended after three months of restrictions on movement to rein in the, its COVID-19 outbreak. As of Sunday, 47 million Spaniards will be able to freely move around the entire country for the first time since the government declared a state of emergency on March 14th. The lockdown measures have been rolled back gradually over recent weeks. Travelers from European countries, including Britain, can also enter Spain now without having the quarantine for 14 days. That quarantine rule still applies to non-Schengen countries except for the UK. Apple's Friday decision to close stores in four states with surging coronavirus cases highlights a question that other businesses may soon face. Stay open or prepare for more shutdowns. Apple, like many other major U.S. retailers, has shut down all of its U.S. locations in March. On Friday, it said it would shut 11 stores, six in Arizona, two in Florida, two in North Carolina and one in South Carolina that it had reopened just three weeks ago. British shoppers uh, bought much more than expected in May as the country gradually relaxed its coronavirus lockdown and online retailers boomed, adding to signs that the economy is moving away from its historic crash in March and April. But official data also showed public borrowing hit a record high as the government uh, opened the spending tabs and public debt passed 100 percent of economic output. And that's all for the business news for this evening. And it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Barak. A stabbing rampage that killed three people as they sat in a British par park on a summer evening is being considered a terrorist attack as a 25-year-old man who was believed to be the lone attacker was in custody. Authorities said that they were not looking for any other suspects and they did not raids or rise at Britain's official terrorism threat level from substantial. Three people were killed and three others seriously wounded in the stabbing attack. 
London City Airport awaited its first death flight in nearly three months as Britain moved another step closer to fully emerging from its coronavirus lockdown on July 4th. Airport officials announced a deep cleaning and posted the results of a survey showing that most people, 72 percent, would like to fly again when it was safe. The first routes will be domestic because of international travel restrictions and only a handful of destinations will be served in the first weeks.